Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And I'm Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifo with Cities of Hope Ministry here at All Points TV and Omni Orbis Church. I am the minister for Omni Orbis Church, and we are a church without walls. The whole globe encompasses our church because we are the church. Well, today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic um, is Elijah. And Elijah was a prophet. And uh, the story about Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, Zarephath, um, we're going to talk about. So stay tuned and you'll find out. Yes, he does. He takes our fears away, and he is about life. And that is none other than Jesus Christ. Uh, the Jews call him Yeshua. The Arabs call him Esau. I call him my Lord and Savior. Well, just want to let you know, I'm going to do a little something different today. I'm taking off my hat um, as reverence for worshiping God. And I just want to let you know that um, I will no longer, until told differently, by God himself, I will no longer wear my hat while I'm ministering. Uh, we do that as reverence in the sanctuary. And some people think, well, geez, nobody's going to tell me not to wear my hat. And also, if you look real carefully, uh, I have around my neck, I used to have a cross. And I want to apologize to the creator of the universe that I was actually practicing adultery. Uh, idolatry. Idolatry. Not adultery. <laughs> idolatry. And uh, I just have a heart here. The heart I found, the cross was given to me as a gift by uh, Sarah uh, Baker uh, many years ago, and I wore it for years, and I could not go anywhere unless I wore that cross. Uh, one person told me if my son was killed with the um, AK-47, why would I wear an AK-47 around my neck? So just think about that. Just something to think about. I want you to know here, um, Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry here at All Points TV and Omni Orbis Church. Uh, we are all works in progress. We're all works in progress. And I love the Lord, my God, with all my mind, body, heart, and soul. And I love my neighbor as I love myself. Although there's some neighbors you wouldn't want to have them love you like they love themselves. But today we're going to talk about Elijah and also the widow of Zarephath. Now, she was a widow, okay? She was a widow of Zarephath. And uh, um, the story of Elijah, um, he was a prophet, and he went before Is Jezebel and Ahab, okay, were just a couple of wicked um, rulers. And um, they didn't care about anybody. They, they, they murdered at will. Um, they stole people's properties. They taxed uh, heavily the people of the government that they uh, were part of their kingdom of Israel. And the thing is, they were not nice people. They mirror the people that are ruling class right now on the globe. And uh, if you look back at last, before last week, I believe it was the 29th of October, you will see our short uh, when you go to a Greater Understanding Genesee and subscribe. Uh, we do two programs. We do an hour program, which you're on right now. And then right at, that's from 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time uh, without uh, fail. Uh, and then we do a short from 12.15 to 12.30. Now, sometimes that short is 14 minutes. Sometimes it's 20 minutes. Uh, we try to do our best, but it's, it's to bring knowledge, bring understanding. It says in the word of God, and I go by the Bible as the length and shadow of my life and getting closer and closer and more intimate with the Lord, God, 
Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, which is one person. Uh, yeah, but those are his, his dispensations, what they are. But the thing is, um, these 66 books called the Bible um, have taught me so much, have changed my life tremendously, and uh, they've changed many lives. Um, also, I'm studying other religions right now, uh, Buddhism, I'm studying Zoroastrianism, I'm studying even atheists, um, studying uh, Muslim, Muslim, Islam. I'm studying all those different religions and even Druze, D-R-U-Z-E, you can look that up on Google. That is the heritage of my mother and father's family. And the Druze um, were promoted prior, they had uh, a convert prior to the 11th century. Uh, and then after the 11th century, it was closed, it was a closed sect of believers in Muhaddin, the believers, the one God. And uh, they were the people that showed Moses on Mount Sinai in the middle of Saudi Arabia through the auspices of um, the um, Jethro, who was, Jethro was uh, Moses' father-in-law for his second wife, um, Zipporah, and uh, uh, his father-in-law. And he taught him how to be a shepherd. At the same time, he took and both his wife and Jethro uh, took them to the top of Mount Sinai there in the middle of Saudi Arabia and showed them God, showed him God, God through a burning bush. Now, for a shepherd to see a burning bush was common. But this was a particular bush. This burning bush not only spoke to him, but this particular burning bush was not consumed. And uh, if you study the word of God, the Bible, and even other uh, religious scripts and, and scrolls and that, you'll find out that um, that was actually Yeshua speaking to him. We call him Jesus or Esau. And uh, he was the one that came and was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on a cross at Calvary for the sins of the whole world, was buried, uh, led captivity captive uh, in the bowels of hell, prayed them all out, um, and presented his blood on the mercy seat in heaven, which a replica is also the, the seed here, um, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, which many people say are missing, but uh, it'll be there, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. And um, came back, was seen by 500 people at one time, I heard, in the Bible, and at the same time uh, put us all on a mission. The mission was what? Between Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they got together and they said, uh, when the beginning, Genesis, let us make man in our likeness and our image. Let us have, let him have dominion over the birds of the air, fish of the sea, everything that creeps on the ground. And that's in Genesis 126. And uh, what happened after that? Man and woman fell to sin. Sin from the pride of life lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, and the love of this world, and thought they could do it without God. And at the same time, uh, they had a plan, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, of sending Jesus, Yeshua, Esau, into the world, and to die on a cross, Calvary, and shed his blood for the redemption of all of us uh, for the sins of the whole world, even those that would never receive him. And uh, it's an amazing story. It's a love story that God had uh, put together, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, to do what? Jesus' mission was to save what was lost, to heal the brokenhearted, because we were brokenhearted, because we had lost a relationship with the Father, and also to destroy the works of the enemy, the works of Satan, accuser of the brethren, 
and also uh, to go and put us on a mission. And that mission, if you wish to look for it, is in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, that's what we do here at uh, Omni Orbis Church uh, and uh, Cities of Hope Ministry is to preach the gospel, the true gospel. Uh, when we worship Jesus, we're supposed to worship in what? Truth and in spirit. There were those that worshiped him while he walked on the earth almost 2,000 years ago. And we're coming very close to the end of that church age of 2,000 years. But today we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about Elijah, who was a prophet, and uh, he came and he told Ahab and Jezebel that by my word, it will not rain until I say so. And the rain stopped, and you understand, well, well, it's just rain. Well, understand one thing. Agrarian society, food cannot grow without water. Uh, you can plant seeds all day long in soil, even beautiful soil, um, that would receive seeds. But without water, it will not germinate. It will not grow into fruit and food. And it basically created a famine at that time. And then all of a sudden, uh, he said, okay, uh, I have to flee because Jezebel and Ahab wanted to kill him. And the story that we're talking about is the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. And this widow, God told him, he says, what am I going to do? He was in fear of Jezebel and Ahab. And uh, he says, well, go to the brook Chenoweth. And what you need to do is, is I will send you meat. And meat fell from the sky. And you can drink water there. And then finally that brook dried up. And he said, what do I do? He says, well, I'm going to send you to um, a Canaanite woman uh, and uh, in Zarephath, and she will take care of you. Now, imagine this. Believers, non-believers, ladies and gentlemen. God sends you to someone that's going to take care of you. And, and the first scene you see is you see Elijah, he's there, there's a woman, and she's gathering sticks. And he says to her, because he was sent by God, take care of me. I need something to drink, a little water, and make me a cake of bread. And uh, she says, right now I'm gathering some sticks. I have a little meal, a little oil, and I'm going to make a meal for me and my son. She's a widow. Me and my son. Uh, before we die. Now, wouldn't you think, isn't that strange? God's sending you <laughs> to a woman that has a little bit of meal in a, in a, in a, in a, in a jar of that and a little oil uh, to cook with it. And uh, I'm going to take care of you. Well. Keep in mind, he did. God likes to know that he is the power. God wants us to know that it's not us. Some of you out there, uh, some of you live in a box. Some of you have luxurious homes. Some of you have palaces, enormous wealth. Some have little wealth. Some have beautiful vehicles and cars and, and yachts and boats. And you're able to listen to a greater understanding uh, here at uh, All Points TV and I'm um, Nervous Church every Tuesday from 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time in different time zones. If you want to hear it live, you can call in. And if something is a check in your spirit, call in and say, Oh, Reverend Lawrence, I don't see it that way. And voice your opinion. Voice your opinion. Um, one thing that I do and I've learned to do is number one, I read the word. Then after I read the word, I listen. And you say, well, what are you listening for? Well, I'm listening for the voice of God to speak to me. And then I associate throughout my life and my day uh, with other believers of like mind. And even 
of unlike mind, because I want to know the truth. And then after that, I apply what I've learned. And that's what all of us should do. Because it's important that life is very simple. Life is very simple. And I've mentioned it many times on other programs that in life there's many choices. Many choices. What kind of home you want to live in, what kind of car, what kind of food, where you're going to eat, what do you want to drink. But in eternity, there's only two choices, and that's heaven or hell. And I say you better get it right. You have the right to make a decision. You have the right to choose. Uh, when, when Jesus came, he gave us the right to have relationship with the Father. The relationship that was, is better now than it was with man and woman, Adam and Adam, uh, at the beginning in Genesis. They don't have the covenant or the relationship that we have. You see, they walked in the cool of the day with the Lord. But we have a joint heirship with Jesus Christ, with the Son of God. And he lived a sinless life. And through him, we can have salvation. Through him, we can have a wonderful life. Through him, we can learn many things. Uh, of this life until we transcend to another. But hold on just a minute. Um, this is a greater understanding. You're on the air. Who's calling? I'm Reverend Lawrence and Del Sifa. Hey, Lawrence, this is Bobby. Hey, Bobby, how you doing? You have a question for me? Today we're talking about, you're on the air, we're talking about what is the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. Uh, do you have any question uh, about God and the Bible? Um, no, actually, I don't. You don't? Okay, all right. Well, um, I just want to let you know that uh, we're here at A Greater Understanding Genesee, and you can watch our program live. Okay? Alrighty. You be blessed. I'll call you back later. All right. Good morning. This is Reverend Lawrence Del Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry. Uh, you're on the air. How can I help you? Hello? Hmm. I guess I didn't like my voice. But anyways, getting back to what I was talking about, um, you get the opportunity at the end of our program to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, if you choose to do that. I know there's many of you Muslims, many of you Buddhists, atheists, um, agnostics, um, even Druze that listen to my program, and I thank you very much, and please subscribe to A Greater Understanding Genesee. I'm not here to convince you to believe and have my faith. And as I said earlier, I'm studying right now all different faiths, because unless you understand others' faiths, you cannot really embrace your own, and I believe that wholeheartedly. Well, let's look at Elijah. What is the definition of his name? It's Yahweh is my God. That was he, what he was named. Yahweh is my God, either by his mother or his father, named him and sent him on that mission. And where did they get the name? Well, they were inspired by God. Everything that we see and do uh, were inspired by God. All that wealth that I talked about earlier or lack of wealth is from God. You know, I'll just like to interject. Uh, I yes. heard that this one pastor teach, and I don't know if it's accurate. Well, that's or not, John but, Wilson, our producer. Yeah, but, that's, but all the names of the prophets actually had the name of God within it. Elijah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all those. And he had some very, you know, mention of God in the in their names. Do you, do you find that to be true as well? Or? Yes, that is very true. And, and I respect the Hispanic people when they, when they call the names of their children, okay, uh, uh, what do they call them? Jesus, or Jesus, which is Jesus. Now, I would have a problem with that. I, I think to me, it's, <laughs> that's pretty. I mean, to, to talk about trying to put a, the you know the carrot out there really high for the kid, the, the get ladder is like you know you're naming him Jesus. So, but um, yeah, I, I wouldn't do that. But I mean, I, I just think it's interesting that the, the names of the prophets. Yeah. You know? But look at that though. You know, when people see us, John, when they see us, they're supposed to see Jesus. Those of us that have received Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, they're supposed to see us. They, they don't need to see Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry here at All Points TV and Omni Research. They need to see Jesus. And a matter of fact, 
if you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and you get the opportunity I mentioned at the end of this program uh, to receive him, uh, if you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you don't belong to yourself. You belong to him. You belong to him. Uh, if you're in Christ, you belong to him. And um, I don't think it's bad that they call him Jesus um, or Jesus. Um, you know, they, they call them so that they would see uh, the Messiah. Now, let's get to our program. Um, the program we're talking about is Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, okay, Zarephath, plays a small but important role in Elijah's story. Small but important role. She feeds Elijah in her home with a, with a vat of a little bowl of grain, you know, uh, and also a little vat of oil. And the oil and the, and the grain does not run out until the famine is over. Think about that, until the famine is over. Those of you that, that receive um, what they call here in the States entitlements or benefit or somebody blessing you, um, that will continue and God will have his hand on it if you look to him for the source, as the source of that, but it will end when the famine is over. When the famine is over, then you got to go out there and you got to produce uh, either through labor or work or sweat of your brow um, work. And, um, some people think that in, um, in, uh, Paul, he says, uh, if you don't work, you don't eat. It's, it's in the new Testament. But if you go here and then she feeds Elijah in her home, it's the widow of Zarephath. Soon after, listen to this, her son dies, her son dies. And Elijah pleads to God for the power to resurrect him. Elijah resurrects her son. The rabbis derive from this that if someone opens his house to you, you are responsible for that person's well-being. Think about that. If someone opens their house to you, if someone blesses you, you're responsible for their well-being. You don't go tit for tat. Somebody says, oh, it took you out to dinner. Well, it's going to be my turn next next week or next year or whatever. No, you do it because that's what you need to do. It's the right thing to do. So um, what can, now listen to this here, what can we learn from the Bible story of Elijah and the widow? See, a popular phrase we hear today, especially on the political scene, is marginalized community marginalized community such a term has been become rather ambiguous today but if we apply this same idea to the bible whose scripture regards as marginalized is much more clear the people in society most in need of help were the sick the poor the fatherless, and the widows. Here we have a widow that Elijah comes to. One particular Bible story that features the widow in 1 Kings 17, and that's the one we're talking about, where an unnamed woman lives with her son in Zarephath. She has an encounter with the prophet Elijah. An encounter with the prophet Elijah. And... Encounter with the prophet Elijah, um, and she has an encounter with the prophet Elijah that estimates newfound faith. It creates, stimulates newfound faith. The woman represents not just someone who overlooked and in need, but a part of society without faith in God. She told Elijah when Elijah first encountered her, that she was gathering sticks to make a one last meal for her and her son before they died. Lack of faith. And through this particular experience, she found faith. See, it was as much for she was taking care of Elijah, but that God wanted to take care of her. Elijah too, a prophet of God, has his faith grown from the experience. 
because he's seen the, the vat of meal and the, the, the jar of oil not being depleted until the famine was over. So what can we learn from both of these people in this particular story? Before we answer that, let us examine the narrative context. Okay. Now go to 1 Kings, those of you who have Bibles, 1 Kings 17. And the passage begins with a prophecy delivered by Elijah. He tells Ahab, king of Israel at the time, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. And that's in 1 Kings 17.1. From there, God directs Elijah to different places, eventually leading to Zarephath. Before he gets there, though, he is guided to a raven. God instructs him to drink the raven's water and assures him that the raven will bring him food. Bird bring him food. This miraculous declaration means Elijah will have to trust God. Those of you out there that have to trust God, yes, if you want to walk with him, you have to trust him. Just like if you're sitting in a chair and you just sit down, you trust that the legs won't break, right? You have to trust God even more than that. Okay, so what happens here is this miraculous declaration means Elijah will have to trust God contingent with Elijah's prophecy. The raven where he drank eventually dried, the brook dried. This did not turn into an occasion for doubting, but rather God gave further guidance. You see, if, if God sends you to a woman, he says, don't worry, there's a woman, I'll take care of you. And she's making her last meal. Wouldn't you question? But not with Elijah. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath. He's telling him where to go. In the region of Sidon, which is in Lebanon. Okay. And stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. <laughs> a widow. That's the widow we're talking about. Much like God provides for Elijah through birds. He was going to do something similar, this time through a woman, a widow woman. Once he arrives in Zarephath, he encounters the widow, listen to this, we're going to go over this again, who was collecting sticks. While doing this, he asked her first for water and bread. What happened? Her response initially, now listen to this, contradicts what God said would occur. She told Elijah that she had olive oil and flour, a bowl of each, olive oil and flour, but very little. There would be no bread to give him, and what little food she had may not have been enough for her and her son to survive a last meal together. And that's in 1 Kings 17. 12. From her perspective, she was being courteous to Elijah, but was realistically unable to go above and beyond in providing for this stranger. When a stranger comes to your home, you provide for him. Um, however, Elijah had clear faith in God. You have to have that. If God says, I'm going to send you to a woman in Zarephath and she's gathering some sticks to make her last meal, how is she going to take care of you? Well, you have to trust God. And had just been provided for in the form of birds, okay, a raven, bringing him flesh, he didn't have the same doubt the widow did. The widow had a doubt, doubted God. He had faith. And with that faith, he encouraged her. Elijah told her, first, to not be afraid. Fear not, says in the word of God, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Wow. Something Jesus often told the disciples. 
Then he explained his prophecy in 1 Kings 17, 13, and 14. He spoke to her with authority and with God on his side. Elijah assured her that she would not run out of little supplies. She had another occurrence similar to Jesus feeding the thousands with little provision, five loaves and two sardines. God can take a little and make it a lot. And he did just that. God can take a little and make it a lot. He took me and he's been extending me to the world. And that's a journey that one day we'll talk about on a podcast or a radio program. So he spoke to her with authority. And with God on his side, Elijah assured her that she would not run out of little supplies and had another occurrence similar to Jesus feeding the 5,000 and the 7,000. There were two accounts in the Bible. It says in the, the end of the Bible that, uh, that if, if we were to write down everything that Jesus did, there wouldn't be enough paper in the world to account for it and write it down. An unspecified amount of time passed, and something terrible happened in the widow's life. Think about that. As she's feeding uh, Elijah. All the while, Elijah predicts drought is affecting the land. The woman's son became terminally ill at some point, and he stopped breathing. And this is in 1 Kings 17, 17. She said to Elijah, what do you have against me? Man of God, did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? That's in 1 Kings 17, 18. The woman was understandably distraught about her son. Naturally, you would be if your son stopped breathing. Even as she questioned Elijah, on the other hand, he had a more measured response and prayed to God on behalf of the woman and her son. What did he do? He did the same thing Jesus did before the tomb of Lazarus. He cried out to God in his prayer, and the boy was healed from his affliction. And that's in 1 Kings 17, 20. Now that we have the context, let's discuss three ideas we can glean from this passage. Three lessons to learn from the Bible story of Elijah and the widow. One, and above all, is faith. And what does it say in Hebrews 11, 1 through 2? It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. For by it, the elders, those mature in the word, have a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the world's were framed by the word of God and the things that are seen were made of things that do not appear. So faith is a motif in the story of Elijah, the whole painting, and the widow from beginning to end, both ultimately cultivated deeper faith through experiencing God. The widow experienced God because Elijah had God. He was a man of God. He listened to God, and God took care of him. Elijah deepened his faith by obeying God's initial command to leave where he was and travel. God provided for him first through nature, then through a person. What Elijah revealed, though, through his obedience, is that he trusted God. Whatever the Lord said, Elijah believed ahead of time. More specifically, Elijah did not doubt while he also knowing that a drought would be occurring across the land, he knew God would take care of him. Just like Abraham offering up his son Isaac, he left his 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 servants down at the base of the mountain and said, as he was going up to offer up his son as a sacrifice to God, because he was asked by God to do that, he said, me and the boy will be back. 
Now, what gave him the authority to do that? Well, a deep relationship of God, faith in God. God said that he would be the father of many nations. And all he had was Isaac. And that was it. And if Isaac died, he believed that God would bring him back to life. Well, when God seen how Abraham trusted him, the angel told Abraham, don't harm the boy, because God knew that Abraham had the faith of God. Well, the widow's testimony also points us to faith. Though from the perspective of someone who learns to believe in God. That's her. First, she doubted her provisions. Okay? I don't have enough flour. I don't have enough oil. God provide, proved her wrong. Then she doubted when her son became ill that he was going to live. Again, God proved her wrong. And an unbeliever as an unbeliever, she learned to trust God through experience. But first, she took a chance. She could have disregarded Elijah's prophecy, but didn't. She took care of the man of God. Then she bore witness to his faith and grew her own in the process. You see, someone can't give you something they don't have. Because Elijah had faith in God, the woman. The widow, Zeropath, had faith in God. And that's something that we should learn. The second thing that we should learn from a lesson from the story of Elijah and the widow is God's providence. Providence can be defined as godly care of oversight that God provides people. Godly care. In this particular passage, we see God's providence on display in how he took, looks after Elijah. God cares for his people, and the prophet is no exception. We witness God's providence or provision through the raven, the birds, the widows, and even through Elijah himself. God set Elijah on a mission and was not confused about what plans he set forth. He communicated some of the things Elijah to Elijah, like the water, food, the bread, but did not mention the son becoming ill. Still, God knew what would happen. Through, though God doesn't tell us everything in our life, we can be assured that he knows everything. God doesn't know who does. Furthermore, in this story, nature supplied Elijah with what he needed to survive. Reminiscent of God-given man authority over nature in Genesis. Think about that. God gave man authority over nature. Dominion over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and everything that creeped upon the land. God also provided for Elijah through the widow. Jesus tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Solomon says, iron sharpens iron. And other verses reference taking care of one another. This is a reminder that God sometimes places people in our lives to aid us through certain seasons, and sometimes we are destined to aid others. God has done that with me in my life through certain seasons. He's taken care of me. I've seen him taking care of others. I read about it in the Bible. These 66 books that are life and life more abundantly. So, he provided what he needed 
And sometimes we are destined to aid others. Let's look at that, destined to aid others. That's what I'm here for. On a greater understanding, Genesee, here at All Points TV and Omni Orbis Church, I'm destined to aid others. I have the faith of God. And I pray before I do these podcasts or radio programs, either the hour ones or the short 15 ones. And now we also have <laughs> a TikTok account, 15 Minutes to Greater Understanding. And I'm able to aid others. And I trust that who God needs to be spoken to, he can use my breath because the breath in my lungs is his and my life until it's over to help others. Third, we learn, okay, we learn in the lessons of learning from Elijah, the, the widows at Zerapath, we learn thirdly. God's provision. When God says his provision will come, we can rest assured that this will indeed be the case. Don't doubt God. To doubt God is sin. To doubt God is sin. And that everything you ask him for, you say, well, Reverend Lawrence with Cities of Hope Ministry, I asked God for things and it didn't happen. I prayed for a relative or a mother or father or son or daughter and they weren't healed or they didn't live. But God knows, God knows. And you have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior at the end of this program. And this program, I pray that you glean faith and understanding and provision. That's why it's called a greater understanding. Genesee, because it comes from Genesee County. When God says that the provision will come, we can rest assured that this will indeed be the case. God told Elijah that he would have food provided for him. Elijah asked the widow for food and had no doubt that he would receive bread. The woman, on the other hand, had doubt. The woman lacked faith, and that lack came, became room for doubting. But Elijah's faith didn't provide any room for doubting. See, if we were to adopt this philosophy, ladies and gentlemen, believers, non-believers, if we are to adopt this philosophy in our own lives, we would realize that when God says he will never leave us nor forsake us, he means just that. That's in Hebrews 13, 5. When God says he has good plans for us, we can trust him in Jeremiah 29, 11, where God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, Let's go to that right now, Jeremiah 29, 11, so we can understand fully. Jeremiah 29, 11. And I want to read it so that For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years, and he's talking about uh, the thoughts of peace, be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good works towards you in causing you to return to this place, the place that God has given us. Because why? God says in 29 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you were in God's mind. Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, 
to give you an expected end. And then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. All your life is your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, your bondage, and turn it into freedom. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whether I have driven you. He sent you into captivity to learn, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again unto this the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. You see, God has a heart for us and he cares for us and he wants us to receive him. So, to understand, and let's read this again. God will guide us and he will provide he may not give us what we want, but he gives us what we need. Many times I've prayed to God for things and I didn't get what I wanted. And then later realized, <laughs> if I had that, it would have destroyed me. Considering her position in life, that's the widow, was a woman with a child living in a society with less opportunity provided for her. She had no man to fend for her in that society. You needed one. Ostensibly, she had even every reason to doubt. But if we have faith in God, we should, shouldn't, no matter the circumstances. Scripture tells us over and over to not be afraid. We should shouldn't be afraid, not because our circumstances are easy, but because God is so good. His goodness is so much bigger than the circumstances. My mother, Nabia Sifa, who had transcended, uh, she was my best friend. She was 17 when she had me. And I tell everyone for four years, for four years, uh, it was just my mom and I, and uh, right here in the city, great city of Flint, Michigan. And we lived on McCreary Street off of Court Street with uh, my our uncle, uh, my dad's brother-in-law, Larry Hamity, and my Aunt Rose, my brother's, my father's sister. And uh, I was named after Larry Hamity. And uh, on October 5th, 1953, I am only 41 years old. Figure it. Do the math. Anyways, the thing is, my mother used to pray, the Bia Sifa, and she taught me how to pray. And we'd pray every night before I went to bed. And uh, we'd pray together, and she always prayed not for an easy life. She did not have an easy life for strength to live this life. You see, praying for an easy life will only make you weak. But praying for strength in the life you have is much better. And I learned that from my mom. She transcended on March 11th, 2022. Seems like yesterday that she left. But I have faith. And those of you that are believers, like I said, at the end of this program, you get the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and know where you'll spend eternity. Um, I'll see her again. See, God uses the least to do the greatest things. He put his super on our natural and creates supernatural. Jesus referenced Elijah being sent to a widow in Luke 4, 25 through 26. How amazing is God when he has the sovereignty, which he does, to send us on a journey 
no matter where we are or who we are, and provide for us all along the way. There are many passages in the Bible that remind us of the importance of faith. Through this particular story, lacks the intensity of David slaying Goliath, or the Israelites fleeing Egypt from bondage. Sometimes the simpler stories, too, have a way of speaking to us living in the modern day. We can like, likely find more commonality with Elijah in need of food and water than we can with slaying a giant like David slaying Goliath. What's powerful about this story, too, is the reminder that God uses those least among us to do great things, just like he sent Elijah to the woman Zarephath in Sidon to take care of him. and She had nothing, but she grew her faith. Men with small stature become kings. Prostitutes was held in high regard, prostitution, hiding Israel's spies, that's Rahab. Jesus led a successful ministry despite being a man with next to nothing to his name. The widow in the story with Elijah has no name, and yet her presence speaks volumes. She too offers a lesson to learn. No matter what the story will, no matter what story we fall into appreciating the most, they all point us back to God. That's what I'm here for, to point you to God. He is present. He is present daily, watching over us and providing. He cares for us when we show faith, even in those moments where we undoubtedly lack everything. The trick then is for us to do less doubting and do more believing less doubting and more believing. That'll make life a whole lot easier in the long run. When we doubt comes our, when the doubt comes, our perspective will keep us focused on God. See, the reason I wanted you to hear that story and God put on my heart for those listeners that are growing daily um, is that you need to know that you have, must have faith in God. That's the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They all distrusted and they all had faith. And when you have the faith of God, having the faith of God is a wonderful illuminating provision for your life. Some of you out there that are listening to my program, our program is live in a box. You have no home. Some of you have palaces, but you have a smartphone, and that's your window to the world. There's about 5 billion of you that have a smartphone and are able to watch a greater understanding, Genesee, or 15 minutes of greater understanding. And I thank you for doing that. Well, I pray that you glean something from the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath that you'll be able to carry with you. Well, I just want to tell you a few things. You know, every uh, Tuesday from 11 to 12, a greater understanding, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time here at All Points TV in Omniorbis Church. And I also do a Bible study by the phone, and all of you can write this number down, is um, 1, which is our country code, 701-802-5180. That's 1-701-802-5180. And then when requested, put the access code, which is 6344132, and then the pound button. 6344132 and the pound button. And on Friday, between 430 to six, and you, you want to get on about maybe 
we're going to talk about on November the 15th, 2024, what is the importance to following the word of God correctly? Correctly. A lot of people follow the word of God incorrectly, but correctly. And we're going to talk about that. Also on Saturday, November the 16th, I do a radio program on WSNL Christian Talk Radio. You say, well, it's a local station. Yeah, Bay City, Saginaw, Flint, and Midland. But if you go to your smartphone, and like I said, there's 5 billion of you that have a smartphone, and you put in WSNL Christian Talk Radio live, and uh, you want to get on um, about maybe 1145. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, it's called a greater understanding. How does one share their testimony with a non-believer and a believer? We're going to talk about three tips of sharing your testimony. You should write your testimony down, those of you that are believers, um, or say you're believers. One page, your testimony, and re recite it, rehearse it, so that when you're asked, why should I receive Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and follow your God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you can tell them your testimony and how you arrived at the relationship with the creator of the universe, the one that created everything that you see, created you, and how you can be in him and him and you. And it's just a marvelous relationship that you can have. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to do at 12.15 to 12.30, 15 minutes to a greater understanding. And uh, we're going to talk about um, what are the Hebrew names of God. We're going to talk about the Hebrew names of God. And uh, you, can, you can tune in at uh, 12. 15 uh, to 1230. Thank you for, for listening to our program. And those of you that wish to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and I always give everyone the opportunity to do that, um, bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me. John, could you help me? Okay. Yeah. Because it is a personal faith. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For a personal faith. For a personal faith. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And my Lord. And my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you died. You were buried. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. And you rose on the third day. And because I believe it. Because I believe it. I'm born again. I'm born again. As you receive me, Jesus. As you receive me, Jesus. I receive you. I receive you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said amen and amen. And if you said that for the first time, you can get a hold of me, Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa, um, Cities of Hope Ministry here at All Points TV and Omni Orbis Church at 1 513 512 3200. That's 1 513 512 3200. Or on Cities of Hope Ministries at gmail.com and get me your name and address, and I will send you a Bible wherever you are in the world. And on November the 19th, one week from today, um, we're going to talk about Elisha and the Shumanite woman's kindness. And those of you who want to read ahead, you can go to 2 Kings 4, 1 through 44. We'll see you then, and you all be blessed, and thank you for tuning in. Thank you.